Recently, when I moved back to Oklahoma, I had many people come up and tell me that I needed to meet a Mrs. Jackie Savage, who is known as the Herb Lady. And today, Mrs. Savage has invited us to her home, and we're here at Lake Carl Blackwell, which is just west of Stillwater. And it's a beautiful late fall day, and we don't really think about growing herbs this time of year, but let's go meet Mrs. Savage and find out what she has to show us and find out a little bit about how to take care of those herbs for the upcoming winter months ahead. Hi, Jackie. Hi, Steve. Welcome to Oklahoma Gardening. Thank you. Well, we're anxious to see what you have to show us here about the herbs, but the first thing that I notice that probably is a good thing to point out for our viewers You've located your herb garden on the south side of your house. What's the reason for that? Most herbs need at least six hours of sunlight okay. to get good good growth. What about <laughs> for protection during the winter time? Does it help a little bit, you think, too? Well, the house protects it from the north wind. Okay. So <clears throat> most of the times, and um, the other ones stay green outside, There's the French tarragon dies back. But right. the majority of your hardy woody are, um, stick around almost well, all now winter. We'll We'll go through and we'll talk about some of them, but full sun or, or a lot of sun, at least six hours is important. But there's another thing here that's important too, and that's the soil. What do you need to do for the soil? Okay, it has to be well drained. The majority of herbs do not like uh, clay stuck to their toes, so to speak. So the soil that we have here in Stillwater, you've definitely got to amend that quite a bit or just yeah. move it out and bring in some new well-drained like, soil. Yeah, do a lot of mulching, you'll get a lot of aeration in it. Right. Organic matter, keep adding right. that back too. Now, what we're seeing here is really not your soil. That's a mulch that you put on and that's right. for what? Protection of the winter and to hopefully keep it from heaving. Okay. Because Oklahoma goes through that hot and cold hot. Right. So uh, hopefully it'll keep it from And that's really out. why we lose a lot of our trees and shrubs and different perennial plants just because of the cold, hot, hot action that you're talking about. Well, let's talk now a little bit about some of the different kinds. One that you have right behind me, you've already harvested some. Tell us about that and what, what you're going to use that for. Okay, well, this is thyme, great in uh, meat dishes. And uh, obviously, this did not come from that. This is a baby. Uh -huh. that, and uh, what I do is I would cut it back and then bundle it and then hang it upside down in a dark, dry, airy place. Uh -huh. And you do that throughout the growing season and at the fall, or there's. Well, I do it mostly at the fall because that's when the plant is the most lush. Okay. Um, some of my can do consecutive cuttings. Okay. All right, and then you just hang it up and let it dry at air temperature, I guess. Right. Okay. All right. What else have we got in the bed here? Well, we've got some peppermint here that uh, is an escapee from there, but it's okay. I'll uh -huh. leave it. Okay. And then we have. Uh, four different, five different kinds of thymes. We've got the upright, uh -huh. a lemon, a variegated, this is caraway, and the orange. Okay, and then at the very end you've got a... Salad burnet, that wonderful cucumber flavor. Okay, now I think a lot of people are hesitant to grow herbs at first because they're not really sure how to get them going and that kind of thing, but a lot of these reseed themselves. Some you probably take cuttings and replace a plant that way. One of the easiest ways to do, say, the times or anything that's kind of creeps along is to do air layering, which uh -huh. would be just take a, a, a piece of wire and take, well, here's one that's, that's mm -hmm. rooted right there. Just cover it up a little bit with the soil and... Yeah. And and, and then would you take some of these in during the winter time or would no. you just leave them here? I just leave them here. Would you come in and mulch over the top of them anymore if it should get real cold? No. They, they seem to, I've never had, this, is, this has been here for three years, and it's, uh, you know, obviously right. got through that cold. But again, because of your site selection, <coughs> that helps a lot. But right. w if someone did have an area where they keep losing them, do you think mulching over the top would help any? I, I wouldn't. Okay. You might lose would. it even more. Well, let's see right. what you've got on the front bed here, too. Well, these are the, I guess, the more common ones, the uh -huh. sage and uh, the chives, which I can usually pick on all winter long, and the garlic chives. Right, so these will pretty much keep going right through the winter time then, and these have a tendency to recede themselves, right? The garlic chives are very prolific. Uh -huh. They do um, recede themselves. Um, the 
this is about the third year for the sage. I'll probably replace it next year because um, it's getting too woody. And then you'll do a cutting. Is that how mm -hmm. you'll do that? Mm -hmm. So you can, once you get them started, you can just keep propagating most of them. I guess the chives you could do by division. And right, and that is suggested. Okay. What about the ones in the containers? What have you got Okay, there? well, these are um, <clears throat> the tender perennials. Most of them are Mediterranean. This is the bay, uh -huh. the sweet bay, and the scented rose geranium, the rosemary, um, sweet marjoram, which is great in beans, string beans, and uh, peppermint, and that's a rosemary that I've... Uh, Topiaried. Now you call these tender perennials. If we were in Florida where I just came from, we could grow these year round, but here in our temperate zone, you've got them in containers because you need to take them in or we'll lose right. them during the winter time. Right. You mentioned another thing on how to use some of these. Once we get the art down of growing them, then it's real scary for people to figure out how to use them in their, their dishes. What do you, in cooking, do you just suggest to experiment, read lots of recipes, or what tips do you have for people? Well, there? I think you're noticing more and more recipes in magazines and so forth that, that suggest using herbs. And it's just a, a, a behavioral thing. You need to uh, make yourself come out and pick some herbs and use it right. and start small. Don't use a lot. Um, do you use fresh, dried? I prefer the fresh, but I'm fortunate I've got a greenhouse. Okay. Um, but you can go ahead and dry them and then use them mm -hmm. during the winter as dry. Okay. And I'm, I'm sure there's lots of references and information for people to use on how to propagate, grow them, as well as prepare them in their food dishes. Right. Too. And it's really, you know, you're, the, the fresher the better. But, uh, you know, a lot of the herbs that are on the market shelves, you don't have any idea how long they've mm -hmm. been there. And storage is uh, six months to some, is as long as you can keep some of them. Okay. What about calories, adding these to our foods, is that? I don't, that's not a concern. Not a concern. Because what you're doing is you're taking, you can take the salt away and add flavor. Exactly. Okay. Tell us about the lower bed there, what you've got okay, in Okay, well that's the uh, French tarragon, and um, then a little bitty, tiny, itsy bitsy uh, Greek <laughs> oregano that I'm trying to grow this year to see if it'll winter through. Okay. And then the uh, one to the whatever that one is. Growing in a mound. In a mound is the winter savory, which I've harvested uh, three times this okay. year. And all of those will make it through pretty much the winter yes. again. Yeah. Well, now, you took us on a tour of the rest of your garden, and there were a few things that you had back there that really caught my attention because I have seen those grown in Florida, and I was really surprised to see them here in Oklahoma. But it just goes to show if you'll experiment a little bit, you really can grow some unusual or exotic type plants. Tell us about some of those that you have in your garden. Okay, well I have um, some other herbs in there, but then I have cardoon, which I learned from you. Uh, I'm waiting for the flower, right. the thistle flower. And then I have leeks, which winter through, and I can have uh -huh. uh, cocky leaky soup all, all winter. Right. And um, uh, the um, lemon balm okay. and lemon verbena, will definitely have to be harvested. Uh -huh. It is a tender perennial. It's from the Mediterranean. Okay. Now, some of the things that you've got in your garden, they're really not as evasive as we think of some of the other herbs. That's always a concern for people is, you know, we've always heard about mints, how they will take over. What suggestions do you have about some of that? You, you gave me a clue right at the first, and I thought that was interesting too. Well, the mints here, because it's hot and dry and it's south exposure and uh, it doesn't become, well, it doesn't become as evasive as right. what people think. And my suggestion to people when they say, well, the men is evasive, harvest it. Right. And use it in your sun tea. Uh -huh. um, you know, dry it. Right. Uh, use it in potpourris uh, for a fresh mini smell mm -hmm. all. And mulching obviously helps a lot, don't you think? Yes. In, in keeping some of the things in control as well as preserving moisture and things like that. Well, I, th I think you've given us some uh, good clues here on, on some of the ways to keep them through the winter, but you're also known for some other things, too. Let's take a look at what else you've got to show us, too. Okay. Well, earlier we showed you how to make some wreaths out of different landscape plant material in your backyard. And now, Jackie, you're going to show us some ways to make wreaths for the holidays using native grasses out of Oklahoma. And I think these are very interesting. Tell us a little bit about 
each wreath and, and the time it takes. And what, what have we got here? What kind of grasses do we have? Well, we have a, a variety of Oklahoma grasses right. um, that I start picking in early spring. And I've gotten to the point now where I arrange them so that they have a name. This one is the uh, North Winds Blow, and we shall have, oh, I'm sorry, and White Caps Do Show. And it's, I couldn't tell you the name right, of the Right, but so are, just, are there any specific ones that you have more luck with? or? Uh, no, it's, what I found is that it's the picking. Okay. It's got to be just like the wheat weavers, it has to be at the doughy stage. Okay. Otherwise it goes all the way through and right. shatters. Now, you started this though on a straw wreath. Is on a right? straw base. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then what's the next step? Okay, then I cover it with the uh, Spanish moss and then I make up about 60 little bouquets, <coughs> excuse me, and I start in the center and then work my way to the outside, again making another 50, 60 wreaths and then going into this and filling in the center. Okay, let's look at this one. It's a little different color. I know it's hard to get different color contrast because of the native grasses, but you've done a nice job in well, demonstrating this, <clears throat> that. This one's the new, new one for this year. I just completed it before you got here, and I haven't gotten a name for it yet. Um, I have to work on it and look at it and, and see what it reminds me of. How much time does it take you to make one wreath? It takes me anywhere from three to four hours. Okay, great. And the other interesting thing I noticed, too, is that you're not really gluing these on like we saw earlier in the wreaths. You're wiring them on. and Right. I wired the first part. You, when, this one's a good example. that You can see the, the center part with this white and the foxtails. Um, that's wired on first. And then I use floral pins to tuck the rest of the um, bouquets in. Mm -hmm. And this one's called the Indians Chase the Foxes because of the Indian grass and the foxtail grasses. Well, I can tell you really take a lot of pride in these. It is an art, just like painting a picture. So I can see thank why you. you'd want to name them. And we want to thank you again for inviting us out. We've got a lot of great ideas today, hopefully some that the viewing audience will pick up on. And we hope you'll invite us back where maybe we can talk specifics about how to harvest and maybe use the herbs and the food as well as make some potpourri so thanks again we've really enjoyed Very good. it well thank you i've enjoyed it we hope you enjoyed this video it's part of our ok gardening classics youtube channel you can also find more recent videos on our oklahoma gardening youtube channel and join us on social media for great gardening tips photos and discussion